Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is we're going to make some predictions using experimental probability. Okay, so there's our common core strand for our awesome teachers, and the question is how can we make predictions using experimental probability? Okay, so scientists um, uh, study data to help uh, them make some predictions, and so they study it over and over and over and over again. So we're going to use some simple examples to show how they're doing it. So we can use our probability knowledge to make some predictions. Okay, so so David found that the experimental probability of him throwing a bullseye when uh, throwing darts is 2 out of 10, or 2 tenths, or 20%. So out of 75 throws, about how many bullseyes could he predict that he might make? Now there's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, let me just slide that up right here. One way is to use a proportion. A proportion is when we have a fraction equals a fraction. Okay, so if you have a fraction equals a fraction, your book wants to suggest 10 times what will get us 75. To me, I think it's easier if we have a proportion, a fraction equaling a fraction, we can do this um, uh, math uh, procedure that's called cross multiplying. We can go this times this equals this times this. So I'm going to say 10x equals 2 times 75. When we have a proportion, we, we cross multiply. So 10x equals 150. And we divide both sides by 10, and we get x equals 15. That's easy enough. That's if they give you it as a fraction, and I, you can go ahead and do that. But if they give you it as a percent, then all you got to do is, is uh, find 20% of 75. So remember, 20%, we have to move that decimal over two places. So if it's not there, it's understood to be right there. So if I moved it over one, two places, it becomes 0.20. And of and math means multiply. So 0 0.20 times 75, that's what I'm going to do. And then if I multiply that, we get 15, okay? So uh, David can predict that he will make about 15 bullseye throws out of 75 uh, tries right there. He might make uh, tw uh, uh, 13 or 14. He might make 16 or, or 17. But, you know, out of uh, 75, we can say that 15 is a good estimate of how many bullseye throws he would make. Here's another one. So a car rental company uh, sells accidental insurance to 24% of its customers. Out of 550 customers, about how many customers are predicted to purchase the insurance? Now again, your book um, uh, might, uh, your book actually does to make a proportion. They go 24 over 100 because percent is per 100. Excuse me, per 100. So 24 over 100 equals X over 550, but I'd just rather do 24% of 550. To me, that's easier, especially when we have calculators, and I'm assuming you guys do. So 0.24 times 550, well, let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to pick up the calculator right here. So math tools, I'm going to go 0.24 times 550. So 0.24 times 550. And that gets me 132. Okay, let's just clear that out now. 132. So that's what X is. So about 132 customers are predicted to purchase uh, the insurance. Okay, always try to answer the question in the context of the problem. So it's asking about how many customers are predicted. So don't just write 132. What's that mean? 132 tires, 132 pounds, inches. No, in this case, it's 132 customers are predicted to purchase that insurance, okay? I really try to emphasize that in my class, to try to answer the question in the context of the problem. And still I get kids just write 132. So just, you know, um, try to uh, uh, please your teacher and show them how smart you are by knowing what you're talking about, okay? All right, so, uh, and I still probably would do it too if I was your age anyway, so no big deal. So a prediction is something we can reasonably expect to happen in the future. A qualitative uh, prediction helps us decide which situation is more likely in general. In general, okay. So here's an example: a doctor's office records data and concludes that on average, 11% of patients call to reschedule their appointments per week. So I sometimes do that. It just happens sometimes. Your life gets in the way. So. Uh, especially the life right now. We're doing this COVID uh, break, and so I'm, it's uh, the beginning of August in 2020 for me, and um, our school district has decided to do some distant learning. So that's, that's why I'm doing this right now. Anyway, so things get in the way. So 
Let's get back to this. So the office manager predicts 23 appointments will be rescheduled out of 240 total appointments during the week next week. Is this reasonable? Okay, so first of all, we know 11% of the patients reschedule. So let's find 11% of 240 and see if it's close to that 23 right there, okay? So we can use a proportion, 11 out of 100 equals X out of 240, then cross multiply. Uh, that's the way your, your book will probably do both methods. I'm just going to choose one of them. To me, it's much easier just to do 11%, uh, so 0.11. Remember, the decimal's right there, so we're going to move it two places to the left. So 11% is the same as 0 0.11 times of means times 240. That's what I'm going to do. So if we do that, let me pick up my groovy online calculator. Such a high-powered calculator, huh? <laughs> So uh, I wish I had like a scientific calculator on here. That would be pretty slick. So 0 0.11 times 240, and we want to see, is that going to be close to 23, okay? So, oops, I did something wrong here. Uh, what did I do? So 0 0.11 times 240. I think I did 24, so 240. Uh, I get 26.4, okay, so is 23 close to that? Yeah, it's pretty close, okay, so uh, the prediction of 23 is reasonable, but it's a little bit low, so again, try to answer your question in the context of the problem, okay, so don't just write 26.4, that doesn't really make sense, you guys, um, uh, so is 23 close to that? Yeah, it's reasonable, but it's a little bit lower than what's expected. Okay, that would that would really impress your teacher. How about this? Does 26.4 make sense for the number of patients? Can we have a 0.4 of a patient right there? No, it's got to be a whole number, you guys. So the number of patients should be a whole number. So to be more accurate, we probably round it to 26, the nearest whole number right there. So anyways. Okay, in emails to monthly readers of newspapers, 3% of emails come back undelivered. So the editor predicts that if she sends out 12,372 emails, she will receive 437 notices for undelivered email. Should we agree with her prediction? All right, so what we've got to do is find 3%. We've got to find 3% of 12,372 and see if it's close to 437. Okay, now remember, 3%. The decimal's right there, so we've got to move it two places. So 1 would take it to 0.32, so there's a blank spot right there. So 0 0.03 is 3%. Okay, so just be careful. Very calm and air as kids want to write 0.3. And 0.3 is 30%, which is much greater than 3%. So 0 0.03, we're going to multiply by uh, 12,372. And when we do that, we get 371. So are these numbers close? Okay. Is, uh, is uh, uh, this, sorry, is this 437 close to 371? Should we agree with her prediction? I'm going to definitely say no. Um, because about 371 emails out of those uh, uh, will come back undelivered. So the prediction that they're doing is much higher than, than uh, what, what should be expected. So I don't think that's as accurate. Okay, we can use proportional reasoning to make quantitative predictions and compare uh, options to in real world situations. So it's just more of the same, you guys. So an online poll for a movie site shows its poll results for a new movie. If a, uh, a newspaper surveys 150 people uh, uh, leaving the movie, uh, how many uh, people can it predict uh, w that will like the movie based on the online poll? So did you like the movie? Yes, 72% of them liked the movie. No, 28% of them said they no. So we want to find what's 72% of 150 so we can answer this part right here. How many people can we predict uh, the movie to be based on the thing? If the movie site's uh, uh, claim is accurate, um, if the movie site's claim is accurate, and that claim is over here, 72 percent, and the newspaper said they had 104 people uh, that likes the movie, is it is it a, a nice estimate right there? Okay, so let's first find 72 percent of 150. Okay, so. 0.72 times 150 gets us 108, okay? So since 108 is pretty close to 104, the newspaper survey and the online poll show about the same percent of people that like the movie. So, so answer the question, yes, the movie site claim is, is an accurate claim. 
All right, let's try one more. On average, 24% of customers who buy shoes in a particular store buy two or more pairs. Okay, so one weekend, 350 customers purchase shoes. How many, uh, how many uh, can, that should be a can be expected, let me fix that. How many can be expected, not ban be expected. Come on, man, I thought I cleared it all up. I usually go through and try to clear up everything, and I, I thought I got that. How many can be expected to buy two or more pairs if 107 customers uh, buy more than two pairs? Oh, I'm sorry, there's two questions. How many uh, how many can be expected to buy two or more pairs? There's another error right there. There should be a question mark for right there. Okay, and if 107 customers buy more than two pairs, did more customers than normal buy two or more pairs? Okay, so it's expected here, uh, right here, that 24% of the people buy two or more pairs. So we're first going to find 24% of 350. Then we can answer both of these. How many uh, are expected? And if they bought 107 uh, people, bought two or more pairs out of that 350, is that more than expected? So let's find 24% of 350. So 0.24 times 350, I get 84 customers, okay? So how many can we uh, expect? 84 customers, okay? So so um, uh, if 107 customers buy more than two pairs, did the more customers uh, than normal buy more than two pairs? So since 107 is greater than 84, I'm going to say, yes, more customers than expected did buy two or more pairs right there. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense, and take care.